So hello everyone and welcome to this event uh, by the Multicultural Music Group in association with um, Comunitas <laughs> America. I know, I don't know how to say it, or Communitas. However, so thank you so much for having us. The Multicultural Music Group is a Bronx nonprofit devoted to teaching history through music. And this year we're partnering with different venues, with different organizations to celebrate the census and the Black Americas. And today we are uh, honored to be hosting here Candice Hoyes. So let's hear it for Candice, please. Yes, let's have this space, you know, come to life. And we wanna take this chance to thank the Association for a Better New York, the amazing Sofia Mojica and the team at Comunidades Americas. Uh, WQXR Project Airlift Partnership, the New York State Council on the Arts, with the support of the Office of the Governor and the New York State Legislature, and the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with the City Council. The support that we receive from all of them and from all of you helps us support our mission of continuing to elevate the voices of black, indigenous, disabled, queer, trans, and people of color. So thank you so much for that. Before I introduce you to Candice officially, I want to leave you with the manager of this amazing space, Sofia Mojica. Thank you, Wilfredo. That's Wilfredo, um, an amazing human. And uh, my name is Sofia Mojica. I am the community manager here at Hayground Harlem. Hayground Harlem is a project by Communitas America, a nonprofit organization designed to uplift and empower social entrepreneurs of the BIPOC experience from Bronx and Harlem. And so I came to be a part of Communitas America as a product of the multicultural music group, having been born and bred in the Bronx, being a part of the nonprofit sector, the social impact sector, um, all of my life. So the cross-pollination, the shared mission, uh, just made all the sense in the world to invite uh, the organization of my or origin to the organization of my future, um, which is, happening here and now. So I'm really thrilled to have you all in the space. Thank you for coming and dragging all your stuff here and setting up and looking amazing. And I'm really looking forward to listening to these uh, beautiful sounds. Thanks. Let's hear it for Sophia, please. Thank you, Sophia. So now let me introduce you officially to Candice. Candice's vision is that of an ode to black girlhood. With Afrofuturistic soundscapes, along with poetry and the profoundness of soul music, she is a 2020 winner of the inaugural NYC Women's Fund for Film, Music, and Media. Candice has performed with Open Four and recorded with artists ranging from Lee Manuel Miranda to Chaka Khan to Wynton Marsalis. She was commissioned by the National Black Theater and Michelle Obama's When We All Vote to create a new work to empower black voters leading into the 2020 US presidential election. As an activist, she collaborates with the Feminist Press, Well-Read Black Girl, Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights in Law, Harlem Arts Alliance, Women in Music, and numerous grassroots organizations. She has produced her feminist performance lecture series for jazz at Lincoln Center and CUNY for three consecutive seasons. Candice has written for Shondaland, Blavity, and the Los Angeles Review of Books. Before I leave you with Candice and to poetically frame this um, event, I want to read a poem by Lucille Clifton, one of my favorite black poets. Won't you celebrate with me what I have shaped into a kind of life? I had no model, born in Babylon, both non-white and woman. What did I see to be except myself? I made it up here on this bridge between starshine and clay, my one hand holding tight, my other hand come celebrate with me 
that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed. So now I leave you with Candice. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. I'm going to start with a song. Is it all right if I move this this way? It's a song that I learned to love through my grandfather.
this next song is something that I wrote, um, and you know, it's actually a good time to introduce my friends who are here with me because this song is is a song that kind of encapsulates my journey. And the reason all these artists are with me tonight is that they signify a very special place in my growth as a musician. This is Addison Fry on the keys. Give it up. Jordan Davis on the bass. Joely Garay on the guitar. The birthday queen, Joely Garay. And Jasmine De Leon on the cajon and, and percussion. And I started kind of making sure that everything I did aligned with the people and the goals that I wanted to keep and grow in my life. The relationships, the aspirations, and the dreams. I realized I was my own dream keeper. And around that time I started writing and I wrote this song that's very significant to Harlem because it's a song about the writer Zora Neale Hurston, um, who was a, um, a very uh, pivotal figure in the African diaspora, Afro-Caribbean, Afro-Latin, um, the black American, the rural black American experience, the womanly experience, and certainly like the cosmic experience, which is what I tried to capture. She's just a, a, um, a, uh, a human spirit beyond compare. So I wrote this song about a, um, a belief she had, a, um, an intention that the moon would follow her when she was a little girl. She wrote this in her autobiography. And I thought, man, yes. I thought, I thought, what if I weren't in the middle of this whirlwind of a city? What if I were still that little girl inside and that were my reason, that were my why? What would it sound like? What would I sing? And listen to interviews of Hurston and the melody started to come to me. It took a year. But once it appeared, I, I, I I've uh, kept it with me almost daily. This is Zora's Moon.
time the moon is <laughs> Thank you. Has anyone, has anyone uh, read Zora Neale Hurston yet? Yes. Yes. It's amazing. Uh, she invented so many literary devices and communicative things. I tried to work as many as I could into, <laughs> into that song. Uh, let's see. This one is... Uh, this one is, um, I'm going to have a little water. This is, like Zora, a song from about 100 years ago. But it's about real, relatable problems. The song is most relatable. This is a song written by the um, vital musical pioneer, Bessie Smith. And Bessie Smith, in her day, was actually um, the highest paid entertainer in the 20s as a black woman, not formally educated, maneuvering across borders of the United States where she was chased out of towns and harassed and um, constantly threatened for the views that she expressed publicly. Um, so let's get into this story, and you'll see why I, I, uh, I gravitate to her. Chickens was crawling for days. Felt on the right side of my pillow. My man had gone away. And by his pillow, he left a note. Reading on you got my go. No time to marry and no time to settle down. I'm a young woman and I ain't done running around.
Thank you. I just, I want to thank my band for going all the way out there with me because some of these songs we've never tried before and I rather sprung it on them and rather wasn't sure what I wanted to do with them and they are taking me higher and they're taking all of us. Don't you love them? Give it up for this band. They're taking me higher. This is a song uh, that really inspires me. Uh, I've listened to it more than I've performed it, but it feels high time to start performing it. It's a song by Abby Lincoln. It's a song she wrote a year before um, the Freedom Now Suite with Max Roach. And it's evocative of a poem by Maya Angelou as we you know, live in the space of poets and dreams together tonight. This is Cage Bird.
Thank you. So, this next one is so tied to um, a certain hustle and bustle I felt today and a certain magic that I have discovered in myself as a mother. I'm a mother of two. So, let me catch you up on this last 24 hours. I didn't even tell my colleagues, but um, after spending a wonderful weekend with my daughter, um, making music and watching her learn and spread her wings, my partner flew off to do his job and I knew I was coming to see you. What I didn't know was my son would get a little bug last night. So all night long I was up and uh, not always how I expect to start a show day, right? With no sleep. But at these times, I think this certain magic of getting to be in their presence kicks in. One night, um, a night much like last night where I was tossing and turning and rocking my baby, my daughter started telling me, procrastinating about bedtime, telling me, oh, do you know the atmosphere on Mars, Mama? I said, no, I don't know. What do you know about the atmosphere on Mars? She said, well, do you know that it's pink up there, right? It's cold, so cold. But the colors, Mama, the colors. And I ran into my room, <laughs> grabbed some piece of cardboard on my dresser and a marker, and in the dark started writing everything she was telling me. And uh, over time, it grew into a love song. And I think that that's kind of what mothering has done to me. Anything that it seems beyond my reach, it's worked itself on me. It changed me. Do you know the clouds are pink on Mars, on Mars? At sunrise, fuchsia, my love.
Thank you so much. It means so much to get to hear these artists play something that I, it's so wrapped up in the most personal part of me, you know, and it's, it's such a beautiful expansion. And then to hear you all just take it in and give us your energy, it's such a beautiful room. I know it's an intimate room, but sometimes that just feels like the warmest embrace. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah. And um, while I'm stopped for a moment, uh, we're gonna have uh, a little bit of a, um, an evolution in our, in our configuration momentarily, I think. Um, I don't know if we, how the time is going, I'm gonna check with Alec, but um, we have one more together, I think. Yeah. And then I think Joelle and I might be able to share one, one last one for you. And I just wanna acknowledge my artist and muse friend, Adi Meyerson, the great bassist and composer. <laughs> so cool to see her. So this song is one of my dad's favorites. So for that reason, I try to work it in as often as I can. But it also integrates a lot of really important inspirations for me musically. I first loved the song when I heard it at home, right? In, in the car and in my parents' you know, stereo in my grandfather's den. Then I started to learn as I became a musician and a young woman that there's this great history to this song. This was first recorded by the, one of the most important vocalists and artists of, of uh, the 20th century, Mahalia Jackson. She shaped not only how gospel is sung, but just all vocalism, especially American songs. To come to find out that she had a very important friendship with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And when Duke Ellington, who was also part of their, um, you know, their close, close, intimate community, composed this song, they had the civil rights movement in mind. For Mahalia Jackson, not only to sing and record this song with Ellington, but also it was at the March on Washington when notably not really any black women leaders, the women who organized the march, actually took the podium and spoke. That it was Mahalia Jackson on Dr. King's side as he was giving his, the most recognizable part of his address that day, who urged him from behind, tell, him about, tell them about your dream, Martin. Tell them about your dream. And I think that as artists, we have a special role, we have a special opportunity to whisper in the ear of society, whisper in the ear of, our, of the next person something. And so it's with that intention that I'm always um, thinking about music, that I'm hoping that I can be that voice in someone's ear in a moment when they need it, um, of healing, support, and just, you know, I guess, persistence. This is Come Sunday.
So much. Um, well, I guess I uh, we're gonna do. I think we have time for one more. Is that all right? Is that all right, everybody? Yeah. Okay. This I think we could do a duo situation. Um, Addison does have to transition at the second. <laughs> uh, but um, it's just been an honor to be in this space. It's actually even though I've lived in Harlem for many years. I've never been in this space, and I love to see, like, I'm, I have spent a lot of time in historic spaces as an um, archivist, but to see something new emerge that's meant for building community and embraces musicians um, such as ourselves is very inspiring, and it always makes me feel like there's more to discover in this city that I feel I know so well. So I just want to thank everyone at Comunitas America, and, um, I just want to thank Alec for inviting me and, and helping to make this moment together. And Gabrielle, thank you very much. Um, and, you know, Joe, how should we do this? I was thinking, I, I'm kind of springing this on this birthday woman. Um, rather than singing us all happy birthday like we're in the Applebee's, which is not really her style. She's not an Applebee's type of um, artist. You know what I mean? I mean, we like Applebee's, but I want to give her something a little different. Thank you, Addison. Thank you. I was thinking, like, even if maybe the three of us want to do some, uh, do I, is it okay if I do one more question? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, maybe, maybe tonight. Um, <laughs> not that, but um, I was thinking, like, either a talk to Bobby. Oh, yeah, just talk to Bobby. Just, can I send you a piece of talk to Bobby? In your own mind?
So this has been, to be honest with you, uh, this band in this configuration has never played together. And we were, I just sort of invited people that I really wanted to connect with more deeply. They're my friends, but you know, <laughs> so we connect over, uh, you know, meals and such and um, other things. But this, this collection of songs are some, some things I, I just had to try with them, so. This one we haven't done yet either, but let's get into it. I want to tell you, this is a place I've never been, so I'll take you there. Is there anyone from Brazil here? Anyone been to Brazil here? Hi. OK, well, maybe you'll recognize some of this. Um, and without further ado, a place I want to go, I'm hope we'll try to take you there. I'm 
Jasmine De Leon on percussion and cajon. Joely Daray on guitar. Jordan Davis on the bass. And I'm Candice Hoy, and thank you so much for coming out tonight. We appreciate it. It's great to, great to be back here. Okay, so thank you everyone. Thank you to everyone here at Communitas. Um, we're really overjoyed and thank you for, you know, taking us uh, on that poetic journey. So thank you so much. Let's hear it again for Candice. <laughs> and hello to anyone <laughs> watching us over Facebook. Um, if you don't follow us yet, go and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. You will found, find us as Multicultural Music Group, and also subscribe to our newsletter. Today, uh, the newsletter just came out, uh, the new uh, newsletter for March. So yeah, we hope to see you in our future events, and also here at Communitas, and also please follow Candice uh, on Instagram as well. Do you wanna say something else? No. No? Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. So, Thank you, everyone, and yeah, that's it. <laughs>